Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about atrophic rhinitis. This is a concise presentation for medical students. Atrophic rhinitis is a chronic inflammation of nose characterized by atrophy of nasal mucosa and turbinate bones. Atrophic rhinitis can be primary or secondary. Now let us see about the etiology of primary atrophic rhinitis. An easy way to remember the etiology of atrophic rhinitis is a mnemonic hernia. Atrophic rhinitis can be hereditary. It can also be due to endocrine imbalance because it tends to start at puberty, it mostly involves females and it tends to cease after menopause. Racial factors also play a role in atrophic rhinitis. Whites and yellow races are more susceptible for atrophic rhinitis. Nutritional deficiency such as deficiency of vitamin A or D and iron deficiency can also lead to atrophic rhinitis. Infections such as Klebsiella ozeni, diphtheroids, Proteus vulgaris, E. coli, etc can also lead to atrophic rhinitis. Autoimmune factors also play a role in atrophic rhinitis. For example, viral infection or some other unidentified insult may trigger antigenicity of nasal mucosa and can lead to atrophic rhinitis. Now let us see about the pathology of atrophic rhinitis. The ciliated columnar epithelium of the nasal mucosa is replaced by stratified squamous epithelium. There will be atrophy of mucosa, turbinate bones and seromucinous glands. This is due to obliterative endoarteritis causing decreased blood supply. Hence, the supplying area atrophies. There will be arrested development of paranasal sinuses. Now let us see about the clinical features of atrophic rhinitis. It is more common in females. The nasal cavities become roomy and are filled with foul smelling crusts which are black or dark green and dry, making expiration painful and difficult. The microbes multiply and produce foul smell from the nose. The patient suffers from a peculiar condition called merciful anosmia. That is, the patient suffers from anosmia due to which he won't be able to smell the bad odor coming out from his nose. There will be unduly wide nasal chamber. There will also be nasal obstruction due to the large crust. There will be epistaxis when crusts are removed. Septal perforation, dermatitis of nasal vestibule and saddle nose are the other features of atrophic rhinitis. Atrophic rhinitis can also be associated with atrophic changes in the pharynx or larynx. There can be hearing impairment due to obstruction to eustachian tube and middle ear effusion. The paranasal sinuses are small, underdeveloped with thick walls and they appear opaque on x-rays. This is a specimen showing atrophic rhinitis. Now coming to the medical treatment of atrophic rhinitis. The aim of medical treatment is to maintain nasal hygiene by removal of crusts and the associated putrefying smell and to further check crust formation. This can be done by nasal irrigation and removal of crust by using either warm saline or an alkaline solution containing 1 part NaHCO3, 1 part sodium biborate and 2 parts NaCl in 280 ml of water. 25% glucose and glycerin can be applied to the nasal mucosa to inhibit the growth of proteolytic organisms which produce foul smell. Local antibiotics such as chloromycetin can be given. Vitamin D2 can also be given. Estradiol spray can be given for regeneration of seromucinous glands and vascularization of mucosa. Systemic streptomycin can be given against Klebsiella organisms. Oral potassium iodide can be given for liquefaction of secretions. Placental extract can be injected submucosally in the nose to provide some relief. Now coming to the surgical treatment of atrophic rhinitis. Young's operation can be done. In this procedure, the nasal cavity is closed by creating mucocutaneous flaps. It is opened after 6 months. By doing this procedure, the mucosa may revert back to normal and the crusting is reduced. In modified Young's operation, the nostrils are partially closed and the rest of the procedure is same. Nasal cavities can be narrowed down by submucosal injection of Teflon plate, section and medial displacement of lateral wall of nose, these provide relief from symptoms. Now coming to secondary atrophic rhinitis. Specific infections such as syphilis, lupus, leprosy and rhinoscleroma can cause destruction of nasal structures leading to atrophic changes. It can also be caused due to long-standing purulent sinusitis, radiotherapy of nose and surgery of the terminates. Now coming to unilateral atrophic rhinitis. Extreme deviation of nasal septum may be accompanied by atrophic rhinitis on the wider side. This is called as unilateral atrophic rhinitis. Thank you.